my name is Sophia and welcome to my channel Sophia's Boutique. It's called Sophia's Boutique but I don't actually sell anything. I used to sell soaps a while ago and I really like the logo so I just thought I'd incorporate that into my YouTube channel. Uh, it's just a little introduction and I thought I would introduce myself with the now it was a long time ago it was the seamstress tag questions so question one who are you so my name is Sophia I am a nurse living in West Yorkshire I love sewing <laughs> when and why did you start sewing so sewing has actually I would say it's in the blood. My mum has always sewn. She was completely self-taught, so before her I don't think anyone really did so. My mum's not the best teacher. I think her patience would run a little bit thin with me, so I am completely self-taught as well. I just taught myself through watching YouTube, so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make a YouTube channel as well, because I've taught myself sewing with watching YouTube so I kind of wanted to give something back and also another reason was that I wanted a vlog so like a little record of all my makes and I thought even if nobody watches my channel it's a vlog uh, for me to record all my makes and hopefully it might motivate me as well to continue sewing continue finishing those projects and then I can see how I've developed as well so that's one of the main reasons why I wanted my own channel oh yeah so the the question was actually when and why did you start sewing so yeah it's in the blood um, I forever for whenever I can remember my mum used to sew I used to be um, very fascinated with the sewing machine, was never allowed to touch it. <laughs> it was her pride and joy. Right, she then did get me a, a sewing machine a few years ago and I just started off making like a quilt of my nephew. So yeah, I didn't really even think about dressmaking. I thought it was way beyond me um, unless I go to some classes or something. And it was actually this dress was one of the first things that I made. So I was just shopping in Tesco. There was the Simply Sewing magazine there. Um, I thought, oh, that's a nice dress. It was the Leela dress. And I just, I loved it. I, I saw it and I just thought, oh, that's such a pretty dress. I want it. So I bought it. it I kept it for a little while. And then I thought I didn't really want to spend a lot of money on fabrics and things unless it was just one of those hobbies that I would start up. Yes, I had the machine, but that was for quilting and things really and alterations. So I didn't want to buy expensive fabric or anything. So I literally went onto pound fabrics online, ordered a few bits. I think they have a minimum of three meters. So I ordered this fabric was one of the fabrics that I ordered. There was a few other fabrics as well. And I thought even if I don't make anything with it, it's so pretty. <laughs> so yeah, I had, so then I ordered that. Um, it actually took me two months from getting that pattern to actually finishing it just because it wasn't a priority I cut it out I actually I actually cut it out um, I didn't trace it or anything didn't have a tracing wheel but oh cut it out and I cut it out at the size that I thought I didn't really read anything then I got watched started watching YouTube got down into a rabbit hole thought, oh my god this is it um, then actually got on with making it two months it took there was a lot of procrastination going on and then finally when I made it I was like oh my god this is something that I can wear outside it's not it's not something to kind of oh yeah I can make it and then put it in the cupboard because it's it's not really nice enough to wear out um, and I didn't want that I didn't want it to be a hobby that I kind of like all the other hobbies that I've had in the past kind of do a little bit and then it just gets put away and then you've got all the box of all the stuff but you don't do anything with it so yeah that was about hmm, 18 months ago that I made this dress and yeah that was it caught the bug from there
my proudest make is in fact this dress i was so proud of it once i'd made it really 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 proud of it it's not perfect this was before i got an overlocker or anything like that so we don't look inside it too much um but yeah i, I just love it. it it probably should go in the rag now but i just because it's my first i want to keep it don't know if that's a bit strange I'm not a hoarder apart from fabrics but yeah so my most disastrous make I would say this I feel maybe a controversial one because it's the indigo by Tilly and the Buttons now I I love watching the vlogs um, other people have on YouTube I, I love watching the Bake That Sews um, Keely um, from Creative uh, Voice, so many vlog vloggers I love watching. They all everyone loved the indigo. Everyone, everyone loved the indigo. Everyone um, had beautiful, made beautiful, beautiful dresses with the indigo. And I thought, oh, that's it. And and I, I need this. One of the patterns that I need to get. Um, I got it. And. Apart from the fabric that I bought from Pound Fabrics, my mum, as I said, used to be um, into sewing and she was a fabric hoarder um, and she, she's she got a massive wardrobe full of fabric. So there was this beautiful fabric, red with like cream flowers. I put a picture of it up. Um, the fabric, beautiful. Um, but I still don't know a lot about fabrics um, and I think it's like a polyester. Anyway, started sewing it. There wasn't enough fabric to begin with um, so I knew I couldn't make the dress. I thought I'd make an indigo top. I had so many disasters with it. Number one, I didn't have enough fabric so the facing I had to like chop bits out and stick it to the interfacing to, for the facing. Then I, with my iron, something, I, I put it on one of the pieces, that's why I didn't have enough. I put it on one of the pieces too high, because obviously if it's polyester, it melted. I thought, oh, so that, anyway, a lot of heartache went into that, into that top. And then when I wore it, it just didn't look right on me. And as I said, I'll, I'll put a picture up of it. And I just, I don't like the feel of it. That's totally my fault. It's fabric. Um, my best asset is my waist. Um, and the the indigo is, was like a smock. So did nothing for me. I've since seen other vloggers that have said that they've put ties in. So I think that's something that I need to do. But I just, because of that, I've just, it's at the back of the wardrobe. I'm going to get rid of it. As I said fabric was a big thing. I should have should have been more careful about the fabric that I, that I chose for it. That is my most disastrous make. And I've been put off making another indigo because of that. But so many beautiful dresses that I've seen uh, with the hashtag indigo on Insta and as I said other vloggers. So I think I need to make um, a longer one. Longer dresses, not maxi, like the midi or slightly shorter than midi because I'm, I'm only short myself. Would look best for me so I think I just I just need to go for it I just need to to do it and make another one where is your favorite place to go fabric shopping so my favorite place actually to go fabric shopping um I'm really lucky I live in West Yorkshire so West Yorkshire has a long history of mill factories textiles steeped in textile history so we've got fab works and also we have Dewsbury Market there's two um, fabric stalls in Dewsbury Market that I really 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 like going to. I don't know the names, I don't know if fabric stalls do have names. I'm sure one of them's Finn's Fabrics and he's, uh, I mean I remember being little and going to Dewsbury Market and he used to be there, you know, um, he used to help my mum choose fabric. So, yeah, um, Finn's Fabrics, and he has some really good quality fabric and there's lots of other stalls as well. It might not be the most glamorous setting but you get some really nice fabric and cheap very very cheap you get things that are like three pound a meter it's, 
as I said, it's good quality. Sometimes I've seen those fabrics then on in the high end um, online shops selling for double, triple the price. So yeah, so we're very lucky. Got Dews Market, also got Leeds Market as well. There's lots of fabric um, shops and stalls in Leeds. I think there's B and M fabric, lots of other ones as well. Yeah, I really do enjoy going to Leeds as well. Well, I did used to like going to Leeds fabric shopping. Obviously, with everything that's going on at the minute, not being able to indulge in that side of things but i have got a huge stash of fabric i inherited my mum's stash as well as me picking bits um as i've gone along so i've got a huge double triple wardrobe full of fabric um that i need to just get on with making rather than <laughs> looking for other places and i love watching fabric shops online as well so i follow uh, fabric godmother fox and bear as well um i've bought a couple of pieces off them um but they're normally some really special fabrics that if something really catches my eye um i will i will buy some pieces from there as well but yeah mainly i'm a market girl i um i, I like going to markets for my fabrics what is my most used pattern? So my most used pattern is the Hinterland Dress by So Liberated. I bought this pattern on the back of a review by the Parent Penguin. Um, so yeah, the Hinterland Dress. She did a really good review on it so I thought, I just went for it. It was just one of those, I watched one review and I was like right, I want it and it's just my style as well so again it, it, it waist ties and buttons I do love buttons although my machine doesn't love buttons um, and then you know the little gathered skirt as well it's just my style to a T so I went for it bought it got the PDF stuck it all together and then I've made I've made two two of them <laughs> that's my most used pattern is so i've made two with me i am a little bit of a magpie so i will see a pattern i make one and then i see another pattern i'm like oh i want that pattern and then i'll i'll get another pattern and i'll make so i've actually not made anything more than once apart from the implant dress um yeah and I, I really like it for me the only thing was the neckline was quite deep that's that it's not for me so I made it the first one I, I just made it and then I realized oh no it's, it's too deep and my mum helped me alter that um, actually she we just ended up um, lifting up from the uh, side the shoulder seams and it was fine then and then the next time I made it I tried to remember and yeah I uh, remember, I think I didn't remember actually, uh, I didn't put it on the pattern so I ended up cutting it, I had some extra fabric so I ended up cutting another bodice out with a higher neckline which is much better so yeah I've made two of them so far, that's my most used pattern and I really really like it, really like it. My most dreaded sewing task is at the moment it is buttonholes and the reason it's buttonholes is because my machine does not like buttonholes. I don't mind them <laughs> if my machine liked them. My machine is about probably about four or five years old now. It's just, a, it was just, a, uh, it wasn't, I suppose not simple because it is a digital sewing machine from Aldi um, and it works fine, I've got no issues with it whatsoever, it does the job, does nothing wrong with it at all, except for buttonholes. Now I don't know if it's something that I'm doing, I interface things, but it just doesn't like it. It'll work sometimes and then it just gathers at the back. If anyone knows what I might be doing wrong, if you can leave a comment below if anyone is watching. So yeah, I don't know, it just kind of, when it goes, um, it just stays in one place and then I'll take it out and then there's big bobbles underneath. But then when I put a single piece of, of fabric in, it's sometimes fine. So I don't know if the machine just can't handle the thicker fabric with the interfaced. I, I just don't know what it is. So for the hinterland dress, the first one, then I ended up doing it by hand, um, all the buttonholes, and the second one I just put poppers in because I thought I, I can't be going through 
the whole buttonhole thing again and I love buttons as well I want to use my buttons but I don't know I, maybe I just need to to figure out what's going on wrong with the buttonholes on a more general note what do I not like hemming maybe hemming yeah I actually bought some hemming feet as well um because some especially with like a gathered dresses like the hinterland there's a lot of hemming to do but they they're better for um cottons rather than viscoses so yeah they've they've not the, the sewing feet didn't really help um yeah i think by the time you get to hemming you just want to you can't wait to just get it on and it's finished then so yeah i think that's why hemming's my least favorite as well i'm just so impatient my most favorite sewing task i would say now this is i think gonna be a really strange one is actually the cutting out of the fabric i really like that part of it i just it's the excitement because i'm like oh which which design am i gonna go for um do I want it with short sleeves, with longer sleeves? Um, it's just, it's, you f I just feel really excited at that point. Uh, cutting out, I think there's an inner child in me that just loves cutting out. So maybe that's why I like the cutting outside of it as well. Now I, I can kind of then, it, it, for me, it starts life as just fabric, a, a, piece, a square piece and then once I'm cutting out you can kind of see how you're then going to put it all together and make a garment so yeah that's probably my favourite part of it. What is my favourite sewing entertainment? So my favourite sewing entertainment is watching YouTube. I am obsessed. I love watching YouTube. There's some amazing vloggers out there. So the Big That Sews, um, Creative Voice, um, Secret Life of a Seamstress, um, Devon Thread Tales, just to name a few. I love watching them. Absolutely love watching it. Even if all of them <laughs> review one um, pattern I'll still I'll watch it I'll watch every single one of them I like watching it when I'm sewing as well it will kind of keep looking up um, when there's sometimes showing the fabric or I'll just re-watch it sometimes I know that sounds really sad uh, I don't like to work in silence I'm not really a radio type person so yeah I just like listening to vloggers I'll also listen to uh, watch or listen to Netflix I play things like that on Netflix sound really really strange I was watching oh what was I watching now I'll put I'll put up what I was watching if I remember uh, and with soaps and things um, you can kind of if you've seen them like if you if you're constantly watching if you've watched Coronation Street for years then you you know who's talking and what's going on so you don't really need to be watching and I was watching this series on Netflix obviously I didn't know the voices so I actually put people will know it anyway it's where or it's not audible it's um, something it's audio description so they would so I don't even need to look up um it's obviously for people that, that don't have um, sight but um, I I used it for when I'm sewing because then I don't have to constantly be looking up um, and it just yeah maybe that's a bit of a strange one but I have done that in the past it's it's been absolutely fine and yeah I feel like I'm doing two things at once then um I don't feel like I'm just sat watching tv I'm sewing but I'm also getting to watch something as well at the same time so yeah that's what I normally do also I do have audible as well so I like listening to novels as well fiction non-fiction um yeah so lots of entertainment while I'm sewing printed or pdf so I think as I've mentioned before, for me, PDF all the way. I love PDF um, patterns. I just think it's amazing. I can see um, a pattern I like. I can press buy. Next minute, it's in my inbox. I can download it, print it, stick it together with my masking tape and cut it out it's there and then also for future as well if my body shape changes if i'm ever going to make it for someone else it's just there i can print it off again so yeah definitely pdf for me um i don't find sticking 
it together, a laborious task. I use masking tape, which I think I saw, I read that on the Sew Over It blog about masking tape, because then you can iron over it as well. And for me, the PDFs, um, I store all my um, patterns in ring binders, so leave right files, so I put them in plastic wallets. So for me, like the little printed patterns that you get, especially from like the, the big companies like uh, McCall's and things, very thin papery and I, I always like to trace off anyway so I feel like they're about to rip, um, whereas a PDF, <coughs> strong steady paper, I can um, fold it up into A4, rather than those tiny little um, A5 so that the pattern companies normally have and it just works better for me storage wise as well, uh, PDF all the way for me. So what machine do I use? The machine, I've, I've already spoken about the machine that I use, it's a little Aldi machine called So Crafty. And as I said, it's a digital machine, so it does do quite a lot of things. I think it's got all these little embroidery things, you can do letters with it and things. I've not really used it for that. It can't do my buttonholes, so I don't really want to get into the letter. Um, and symbol making on it and I've, I don't really need it for anything like that anyway. Yeah, so that's the machine that I have and I recently invested in a overlocker as well. I had a voucher for John Lewis so I bought an overlocker. I added some of my own money in and invested in an overlocker and so happy with it. Love it. It's a brother. Yeah, I really really like it. It's super fast, makes the insides look really professional and neat. Um, I know it, I didn't really need to buy it, you know, um, toddling around absolutely fine with my machine, zigzag stitches, but I just I really wanted it and it was a bit of a splurge for me and something that I have not regretted at all. So yeah, really happy with that. So yeah, so crafty machine from Aldi five years old and a of locker which is I think about eight months old from John Lewis which I really like. Do you have any other hobbies? So yes um, I go I am one of those people I don't know if anyone else is like this but I go through phases so I will suddenly decide I am really into paper crafting I will buy all the stuff for paper crafting I'll buy the little powders the stamps um, the heating tool um, guillotines card all sorts I'm into paper crafting and then a month or two down the line or I'll, I'll maybe not I'll maybe I'll make one project and I'm like yeah not really for me so I'll have a box full of all the stuff and it'll just go in my cupboard. I think I got into candle making at one point as well. I was like yeah those you know the jam jars. Went down a rabbit hole in YouTube, saw the people making these really cool candles, thought yeah I'm gonna get in on that. Started making it and was like whoa this is far too much um, time making it and just really wasn't interested in it. Um, you know didn't find it interesting, wasn't really worth my while. Yeah, I've got a nice candle out of it, but how many candles can you burn? Actually, I do like candles, so. But yeah, it just wasn't my thing. <sighs> so many hobbies. But yeah, sewing is my main hobby, I would say. The only other th thing that I do really enjoy doing is I do like making soaps. So yeah, that's, as I said, originally my the reason I've named my channel Sphere's Boutique is because I used to make soaps. Um, I still do dabble in, in making soaps. It's not as easy as you think, you know, the because I make it from, you know, from scratch, so I don't use, um, you know, the melting pots or anything like that. So I'd, I'll use the lye and everything like that. And you have to be really careful, gloves, goggles, all that stuff. Um, and I have got burnt in the past with it. So, so yeah, I do, I do, dabble in soap making. Don't sell it on it. Actually, I think I've got a few bars that I made uh, a few weeks ago that were kind of curing. I made quite a big batch because I make it for myself and friends and family. So if I have any leftover, I might put them on my Etsy shop uh, and sell them. Uh, yeah, so that's something else. And also, I am I have got curly hair so I look after I use the curly girl method if you're curly you might have heard of that you might not have heard of it YouTube it Google it um, 
yeah so i started making my own conditioner bars uh, recently i am it, it worries me about how much plastic i i consume um i am by no means you know eco warrior or anything like that i just would like to cut down on my amount of plastic so i started making my own conditioner bars um, and also i just wanted to to learn about what things go inside conditioners and things so that's the reason why i, I got into making and all into conditioner it got into making conditioner bars um and also um i travel quite a lot so for me the liquid conditioners and things if I made a conditioner bar that lasts me about three weeks or so um, and I feel like it's better for my hair um, so yeah I make that as well um, even when I have time so I'll, I'll make it in a big batch and then I'll just I'll use it up um, when I'm at home I do use um, the liquid conditioners as well because I've got I kind of batch bought a lot of conditioners um, yeah that that's something else altogether so yeah that's um that's my other hobbies i do like to go off on tangents as well so um yeah that that's me in a nutshell um so yeah one of the main reasons that i am that i've made this channel is because i love youtube i feel like youtube has given me so much is you know it's taught me to sew basically youtube has taught me to sew um when i was putting this dress together i was youtubing i'm a vis very visual learner so i like to watch what people are doing instructions can be amazing instructions but i like to watch um so for me yeah youtube taught me to sew that's what i can say and vlogs now that i watch keep me company while i sew and also this might sound a little bit strange but um i struggle to sleep when it's very quiet um so i like i'm one of those people that like a bit of background noise um so i will just put youtube on um watch and i'll have like a, a playlist of say new um videos that have come up and I'll put on really low and that will just help me drift off to sleep um, so yeah I just and as I said I wanted a record for myself um, to see how I develop and I said it might motivate me as well so yeah that was the reason that I thought I would start this channel one of the um, people that I follow is um, a channel called the secret seamstress and i think i'd, I'd watched um all the new vlogs that had come out from people that i follow and sometimes when you kind of refresh it it comes up with older um videos that they have put up so i think it was a secret life of a seamstress i'm pretty sure it was um she had a video um where she did the seamstress tag and even though it was like 11 months ago or something i thought oh this is it just I really liked it I really enjoyed it so I thought that might be a really good way to introduce myself um, as I said if no one watches this video I really don't mind it's as I said it's for me oh yes I don't know how often I am gonna post on this channel hopefully I can make this a regular thing maybe once a fortnight um, I do have a very busy job so I don't think I will definitely not be posting videos twice a week um or every other day or anything like that i i know that I, I will not be able to um do that um so yeah i will try and post as often as i can maybe i will aim for fortnightly um and then just take it from there so yeah thank you for if you have stuck around and watched all of this and also another thing is i love the community the sewing community as a whole um i follow a lot of these people um a lot of people on instagram and i just feel like it's the community in itself just really nice people uh, and the more people that so um the more people can join the community and it's just think it's this amazing skill that we share um 
yeah I'm babbling now so I'm gonna stop the video thank you if you have stayed till till now if you like um, what I have posted then please like and if you're interested in fabric hauls and um, pattern reviews and a lot of chatting um, then please subscribe I would love it if I got some subscribers um, yeah so thank you thank you bye